But one yes. of the first things I wanted to um, sort of touch base with you, and if you could kind of give me a, I know it's probably hard to do, but sort of a paragraph synopsis of, um, because you guys believe in the five points of Calvinism, um, well, using the yeah. tulip, total depravity, unconditional election, limited atonement, irresistible grace, and perseverance of the saints. I mean, right. is it, can you give me kind of a nutshell uh, yes. thing about what that means? Yes. First of all, they're doctrines of grace. They're found in the scriptures. Calvin came forth with that little anacronym uh, that makes it easy to remember them, okay? So total depravity is simply that every man is born totally depraved. That when Adam fell, we all fell. When Adam sinned, we all sin. And that's what the scripture says. So you're totally depraved, and but for the grace of God, you're going to remain in that state. That's the default. So then you got um, to you unconditional election. If, if God, in, in the council halls of eternity, chose you, if your name is found written in the book of life, mm -hmm. that's the end of the discussion. There isn't any, you don't stop it, there's not one name added to, and there's not one name, it's not augmented by one, it's not diminished by one. Then you got a limited design in the atonement, well that's just that. Um, that's what I said last. It's not augmented or not. It's not. It, there's a specific set number of human humans, the creatures that God created. Everyone is appointed to something. Some appointed to wrath. Some appointed to um, to salvation. And and all the rest of the creatures, Satan, the angels, and so on and so on. But for this discussion, the elect and the reprobate. And well, then, and that um, kind of leads me into what I wanted to ask you about next. And this is probably, I would say, the, the biggest um, uh, question that I've always had with the Bible. And yeah. that has to do with predestination. And for the audience who hasn't um, read the Bible, I want to talk about a little story here. Surely, I know you know this story. Um, okay. But it comes back in the book of Genesis. And there were two twins that were born. One's name was Esau. And the other's name was Jacob. And the, uh, they were born to these people named Isaac and Rebekah. And their grandparents were Abraham and Sarah. So that's kind of like where everybody came from in the Bible, you know, the, the righteous ones. But anyway, um, Esau is, is, is the firstborn twin. And then when the second one comes out, Jacob, he's hanging on to Esau's heel. And in, in the book of Genesis, uh, using Deborah's modified uh, condensed version, Esau was described to be kind of like this red, hairy guy, and he grew up to be a hunter. And in my view, I don't think he was the brightest flower in the desert because um, he made some decisions that weren't really um, smart. Uh, when he was at that time, the firstborn was the one who inherited the wealth of the family, the blessings of the family, and that kind of thing. So when he's 15 years old, he sells his birthright to Jacob for a bowl of lentils. And then later on, when they're older and their dad's about to die, Jacob and his mother, Rebecca, uh, kind of co-conspire to trick the dad into giving um, Jacob, and not the oldest son, Esau, uh, his blessing. And they actually, you know, they, they killed a, an animal that was not wild, but tried to make the meat seem wild. And uh, I think the mother put, like, some hair on, on Jacob, so when the father who was blind touched him, it felt real hairy and... So, you know, and so they, he really kind of deceived um, the father. No question. So that, no question. Right, so that Jacob could get, get you know, th this, this blessing. So then years go by, and Jacob kind of, you know, does his thing, and um, uh, Esau does his thing, and both of them actually became um, quite prosperous for that time. <laughs> And Jacob needed to go back to the homeland, and when he did, when he was doing that, he was really scared. And it talks about this in there, about, you know, he knew he did his brother wrong, and he was very concerned about how his brother was going to treat him. And when he returns, Esau actually opens, open, welcomes him with open arms and, um, you know, treats him very well. Now, in today's standards, I think that if this thing went to a probate court, um, the court you know, the, if, especially if a jury heard this, I don't think there's probate with juries, but if there was, they would probably fine for Esau, saying, you know what, this guy wasn't really smart, you know, he was taken advantage of, blah, blah, blah. But 
if we look at the Bible, if you go into Romans, and in chapter 9, there's a whole big thing in there about predestination. Yeah. It talks about children who are not yet born, neither having done any good or ill. Um, you know, so that the purpose called, of God, according right. to election, might stand. Right. Not and of then, him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. He said, I love Jacob, and I hated Esau, and I lay, well, exactly. quoting from so, Malachi 1. So, so when we get to the, and then it also, you go back a few more books, back into one called Thessalonians, and mm -hmm. it says, God shall send them strong delusion that they should yeah. believe a lie, that they yes, all might be Yes, and it says banned. that. Yeah, so, and, and it says because they receive.